Uh, right, it's 11 minutes past seven. Uh, we're joined this evening by uh, James Byler. Good evening, James. Good evening. Thanks very much for coming along. Well, thanks for inviting me. Uh, now, you're from um, Self Defence Cam, is that right? Correct. Just tell us a little bit about the background of that and how it all started for you. Right, so um, Self Defence Cam, I started training in martial arts about, oof, about 15 years ago now, actually. Um, so I started off, I mean, like, like so many other kids, I was well into Jackie Chan movies and all that. I thought, <laughs> you know what, I, I want to get into that myself. It looks so cool. So, yeah, looked around, got into some clubs, um, did a few different things, like kickboxing and Aikido, another one, and just different martial arts over the years. And um, so I carried on training. And I think got to a certain point where, I mean, I've always been quite sort of matter-of-fact the way I think about things. And all yeah. the stuff I was doing, much as I loved it and all the skills I was picking up, the fun fact, it was all fantastic. I think in the back of my mind, there was always that question of like, if I wasn't stood in this nice, safe training room and somebody took a swing at me, would I be able to do this stuff I'm training for mm. real? Or, you know, is, is it or isn't it? And I think for years I was like, yeah, yeah, well, I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't didn't have some... And sure enough, you know, most martial arts, I think if, you, if you're good enough at them, you can do. But I think for me, it was I was looking at a lot of this stuff going, I don't know if this would work for me or not, actually. Mm. So over time, I then ended up... Um, by, by shift, Luke, actually, I uh, found out about a club uh, in Chatteris called uh, Combat Cave, which... So it advertised itself as you know, street self-defence, and I thought, oh, that's, that's quite interesting, and recommended by a friend, actually. So I went along and um, got in touch with them and tried a session, and so within the first session I was like, aha, right, yeah, this is what I've been looking for. This mm. is the kind of taking what I know and now putting it into some different context, so we're no longer just sort of just training what we're training. I don't know why I'm miming here. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> no, yeah. a lot of martial arts, is it's about you do sort of routine. Oh, I'm not an expert by any stretch no, of the no, imagination, no. but a lot of it's sort of routines, isn't yes, it? Yes, correct. Yeah. You often get routines. And I mean, don't get me wrong, those all have their place. You know? yeah. A lot of the routines are, they're to do with building up, um, I mean, muscle memory is not really the right term, yeah. but it's basically getting into the habit of getting getting the moves down, practicing, and so that you know how you're supposed to move, how you're supposed to react, da 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 um, and hey, don't this this purpose to all the training. Yeah, I'm not I'm not here to knock anything else at the end of the day. So all these things have their place. But for me, it was a case of right. I've I've spent all these years. I've done all these routines. I've learned all these skills. And okay, we always do it in the same way in the club. It's like okay, we're doing this combination. Or oh, you're going to throw something at me, and I'm going to do X Y Z technique. Yeah. Whereas then when I went over to say to combat cave, it was a case of right. We're now apply. We're now sort of picking up scenarios. We're applying all this stuff to a kind of a a more realistic. You know, example of what would happen if somebody really went for you. Yeah, so so this is the, the difference between, if you like, martial art training and, and self-defence classes. That's the difference yeah. between the two. I mean, every, everybody's got their own kind of opinion on this, so, you know... I mean, my, my, my daughter and son, but my daughter in particular, did a lot of judo. And, oh, and right. I always thought, because judo... You know, not that I've seen a lot of fights, but a lot of fights end up on the floor, don't they? So, so with judo, you're you're learning how to hold and and yeah, that's, that's uh, and use an use one. people's sort of weight against them and all this kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I mean, know? don't get me wrong, judo like any has certainly got a lot of place to it. Um, th there is this common opinion that a lot of people have that most fights end up on the ground. Therefore, yeah. anything that involves grappling on the ground is fantastic for self defense. Which <laughs> Yes and no. I mean, you, people tend to kind of cherry pick footage to it, yeah. find evidence for this. That, yeah. Oh, look, he ended up on the floor. Therefore, yeah. most fights end up on the floor. Well, not necessarily. Yeah. I've seen a lot of fights which end because somebody takes a swing, gets a lucky shot, and yeah. slap the other guys down. Yeah. And the other thing, when it comes, and the reason I don't particularly advocate ground fighting for self defense, and again, everybody's got their opinion, but is the fact that it's all very well when you're in judo or Brazilian jiu jitsu is the other very popular one. There's only ever two of you, it's just you and your opponent. Right. If yeah. you know, whereas if you got in in the real world, yeah. there's every chance that the guy who took a swing at you has got friends. Yeah. And if you're grappling around on the floor, you may be winning against that guy, but all the time you're on the floor, you're a perfect height for somebody to boot you in the face. Right. Gotcha. So gotcha. there's a lot of elements like that which we we take into account in more in the self defence oriented systems that a lot of the traditional arts. I'm not saying sidestep, but it's not necessarily the angle they go for. Yeah. And so 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 you started self defence cams. Correct. How long how long ago was that? I actually only opened the doors about three and a half weeks ago. Oh, okay. So, so it's I, very new. It very is. New. I mean, I've been training, say, doing this. I've been. When I, after I joined this uh, combat cave, I, as I progressed, and I then deviated out and so went and did a training coaching certification with the, the frac system, which is what I now teach. Right. Um, during this time, I then got more and more involved with the club, and I became good friends with the guy who runs combat cave. And we kind of came to an agreement that because of because I sort of progressed very rapidly into sort of adapting my skills to the, this new environment, and just because of the other the other training I was doing to sort of to bring my skills up, we can I started helping out with the coaching there. Right. So I've actually been coaching self-defence for over a year now. It's just that I've only just opened the doors to my own club a few gotcha. weeks ago. 
we'll, we'll talk about sort of where where and when it meets mm. and everything in a minute. Yeah, but yeah, you, yeah. you mentioned the FRACT system, is it? Uh, yes. what, just tell us a little bit about that. What does it stand for? So FRACT. Um, FRACT is an the acronym for Fight Response and Combat Tactics. Okay. Uh, it's basically it's a system that was developed by a chap called Guy Bloom, who himself has been training in martial arts for over 30 years. Um, he Again, he started off in traditional um, systems and other bits and pieces, and over the years, I think had a similar sort of mindset to me that, okay, all this stuff is great, but does it really work under pressure and that? So he's basically spent years and years of his life pretty much testing and just trying to break everything so every technique that he's ever seen, he's basically all right. Does this work? And can I break it? Mm. Well, if I can break it, it goes out the window. It's no use. Mm. So the frack system is basically the result of the the few bits that were left behind that didn't get broken and thrown out the window. Right. I mean, it, which in fact, interestingly, there's a um, yeah, famous quote attributed to Bruce Lee that you know, um, keep what works, discard what doesn't, and add what is uniquely your own. Mm. And that is essentially exactly the the principle. I mean, it's, that, it's a. I mean, I can't remember how many years ago it was that he passed, but you know, it's mm. all those years ago. It's still relevant today. Mm. You know, if you throw away the stuff which just doesn't work for the context you're looking at, and just keep what does, then you're not worried. You're not, you know, messing around with all this fluff that looks good but ultimately has no real use. Yeah, and 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 it's open. You don't have to be particularly young or physically fit. I mean, no. what about? I was thinking about women, for example, yep. older people, because yep. often they're the victims of Absolutely. assaults and, and, and crime. Well, interestingly enough, one of the things uh, the guy who runs for it, he talks about quite regularly is he talks about Tina. Right. Now, Tina is a fictitious, five foot nothing, you know, seven stone lady, perhaps a mother, whatever. Um, so she's not looking to um, become the next you know, man <laughs> she's not, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but she maybe wants to learn a few things to make her feel a bit safer in the world. Yeah. And we ask us with everything we teach in Frat, everything you know, is you ask yourself the question: Okay, somebody who's six foot, built like a, the brick outhouse and all that. Yeah, there's lots of things they can do to defend themselves. But would that work for Tina, mm. especially against somebody his size? Yeah. And so if it's a case of like, yes, it works if you're big and strong and you know, grr then, well, that's fine for you, but that doesn't really represent something that's applicable for a lot of other people. So yeah. we try and go down the angle of um, we don't train to just beat the hell out of each other every lesson. It's more based on, okay, what can I do against somebody who's potentially bigger and stronger than me? So, and then, and then at the end of the day, if you can train and... And I guess for, for someone like Tina, um, yeah. it would be it would be a, a quick, I don't know, like a pen in the eye or something, and, and then run away. <laughs> there are, well, I mean, we don't necessarily teach pen in the eye. Well, yeah, but I mean... not very legal. Um, <laughs> well, it is when you're self defending surely, if you've got a pen yeah, in your handbag. <laughs> uh, well, interestingly enough, though, self-defence law is something we do kind of touch on. I was going to say, yeah. I yeah. mean, if you're, if you're attacked and, and you, you happen to have a pen in your handbag or whatever... Yeah. Interestingly, you can... I think... I believe you can, because it's an item, you just happen to have it in your bag. If you yeah. happen to have something on your person, you sort of go... Ugh! And just have a reaction, right? Then you know, but there does need to be a kind of a because I guess in most scenarios when you're when you're being attacked or assaulted, the the, the idea is to, if you like, try and disable the uh, assailant mm -hmm. as quickly as possible to make your escape. I mean, exactly, yeah. exactly that, and that is in fact where again we the self defence systems, particularly what I teach, does differ from a lot of other systems. Is some systems they basically teach you to engage and destroy and fight. Yeah. Well, for me, there's a there's a subtle difference between fighting and self defence. Yeah. Fighting is okay. You've started this. Let's finish it. Y yeah, yeah. Whereas self defence is, I'm just going to do whatever I need to do to get the heck out of here. Mm, mm. And so, and in fact, we do we yeah we train for exactly that. You know, okay, if we have if we are forced into a corner and we have to engage and damage, then so be it, and mm. we train for that. But ultimately, it's a case of yeah, just we just need to do enough to get the heck out of there, get home in one piece. Mm. That that is my definition of self defence. It's yeah. not get into a fight, but just get home in one piece. Okay, all right. Thanks for that, uh, James. We'll, we'll just take a short break for some uh, mu music and ads. And uh, we'll it's 24 minutes past seven. We're back with uh, James Bylet uh, talking about uh, self-defence. Um, so tell us some of the sort of scenarios that, that you train for, you train your, your, your students for. Ooh, if that's right. Um, pretty much, if you can think of it, we'll probably cover it at some point. Um, the point of, say, scenarios, you interesting to use that word, is that in modern traditional arts, you'll typically do a lot of sort of stand in front of each other. Okay, you take a swing at me, I'll do whatever defence. Whereas we do try and put things into a bit more context. We, we obviously, like anything, you train it at a basic level just to get the hang of stuff. But mm -hmm. you do then put it so into some sort of context. So we do look at your yeah, basic, somebody's squared up to you and taken a swing. Again, I'm miming, I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, we do everything from, you know, like somebody's pushed you up to a wall, you've been grabbed from behind, you know. Um, in time, you're even moving to kind of like group dynamics. You know, what if you've got a crowd of people yeah. in front of you? How do you kind of manoeuvre yourself? How do you do it? So, I mean, a lot of it, I actually encourage people to say, look, if you've if you've seen something, whether you've seen something out on this 
on a night out, you've seen a video, any sort of scenario you can think of, mention it, bring it up. We'll, we can potentially look at it. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I'm only human. I can't think of literally everything that could possibly mm. happen. So if somebody else has got an idea, bring yeah. it here. And what, what about um, talking? I mean, you know, because often off, trying to diffuse a situation, if you absolutely. like, does, does that form part of the training? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we talk about one of the things we, uh, there's a, a common concept used in a lot of self-defense system is something called the Cooper Color Code. Um, and it's basically, I, I won't go into the details, but uh, it's to do with a variable threat level. So everything from everything's cool, nothing to worry about, to, ooh, well, that looks a bit shady, I better avoid that, to, yeah. oh, hang on, it's about to kick off. And again, you use that not just as a kind of awareness thing, but at a level that if somebody... I was going to say awareness is important as well. Absolutely. Trying to be, be aware of your surroundings and the, what's going on, especially if you're in you know, like a nightclub or a pub or something mm -hmm. like that, you know, with this... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been noted before when I've been... I don't very often sort of go out uh, like on the town with friends and that, but it has been noted when I do, I sort of go into kind of sentry mode. <laughs> um, having, having done martial arts for so long, I'm always kind of like eyeing up the exits, anybody who looks like they might be trouble. <laughs> and that. And awareness, at the end of the day, is kind of the most key thing yeah. to martial arts although inevitably we can't i can't build a, a lesson around just watching things so no no but inevitably it, we move on but it comes on with, with experience i suppose but it, it just does, trying yeah. to uh, uh, try and if you like divorce yourself from potential areas exactly. of conflict if there's a rowdy bunch somewhere exactly. you can sort of just, move just away and, simple things yeah. like, and like yeah. you say then it, yeah when you're in sort of a, a, the closer space using de-escalation tactics and we do I mean we, we don't spend hours on it because it's not as interesting as I mean a lot of this I guess is, is it sort of overlaps with training that say the police a police officer would get yeah, for example absolutely. or a uh, a, a bouncer yeah, <laughs> or you absolutely. know security door security they, they're, they're diffusing situations absolutely. and staying calm and all this well, kind interesting. of thing I had a lovely quote the other day which made me chuckle which is uh, many times a man's mouth has broken his nose <laughs> and it's exactly that some some people have a natural inclination that if they're threatened to kind of get their hackles up and go oh hang on a minute what, what, you know I want yeah. to get away whereas we sort of adopt a more kind of like whoa look, hey, look what's the problem here you know look, calm, yeah. calm down calm down and, do your best to kind of, and we, we do talk about this, is trying to talk, you know, talk a situation down. Don't just go straight for the kill because yeah. at the end of the day, if somebody's coming up and you're threatening your life, then hey, pfft, anything goes to an extent. But if it's just some drunken idiot in a pub and you your immediate reaction is to lay, you know, lay him out cold, well, that probably wouldn't be seen as you know, reasonable force if mm. you haven't at least tried to de-escalate the situation a yeah. bit first. Because you know, the question will be, why did you just hit him? Why did yeah. you just tell him to go away? You know? yeah. So yeah, there's absolutely an element of that in what we do. Um, and in, in terms of the, the, the call, I mean, obviously it's early days, but mm. how, 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 do you, how are they structured or how are you structured? Do you have to turn up in a, in a gi or, you know, uh, or is it just normal sort of you know, just normal gym clothes or comfortable yeah, joggers or tracksuits? or? I mean, obviously the gi, traditional gi, they all have their place. But yeah. for, for when we're talking about self-defence and like applying it to the real world, well, I'm not going to be walking around barefoot. <laughs> <with the gear, laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm going to be walking around in my trainers and my casual top. So yeah. we have like a, a club T-shirt with the frat logo and everything on it. But right. it's kind of a, yeah, it'd be nice if everybody wore one, but just kind of in your comfortable clothing if you want one. Yeah. Get one. But yeah, it's it's all quite informal, the training in that respect. And and, and in terms of, we, we mentioned earlier on about the sort of physicality of it mm. uh, for, for older people or, or um, you know, Perhaps people that aren't as as fit as as you are. <laughs> yeah. um, do you accommodate uh, sort of different capabilities? Absolutely, if you like, absolutely. I mean, we do like a basic warm up. You yeah, know, a bit of fitness training. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's a good exercise regime oh, to is. get into anyway. It you know, if, if if nothing else, you can pick up some. You know, get yourself fit. I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. And the way I always do it, I do. We do a warm up. We do yeah. include press ups or whatever. But it's always a case of. You know, if I say do 10 press-ups and you can only do one, just do one. Yeah. There's no, I, I make a big point, no egos, no competition. It's just do what you can at your level. And even when we're doing the physical, you know, the techniques, if you want to go hell for leather to test each other, as long as you're doing it right, go, you know, ha have a ball, have fun with it, test yeah. yourself. If you don't feel comfortable, you just want to do it at your own pace and you're not, or you're not up to that, take it at your own pace. Mm. Everybody's got their own level. And I'm, I'm not one of these people who insists on everybody goes hell for leather. I mean, obviously, push yourself as far as you can because that's how you progress. But... Mm. It's, it's all going to be tailored to the individual person. At the end of the day. You talked about progression. Is there, is there uh, some kind of a, uh, a methodology, if you like, you know, beginners, intermediate? Or, I mean, in, the old, in your martial arts, obviously, there's belts, isn't Absolutely, there? But yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know if there's an equivalent. There, uh, we do have kind of a, a syllabus, as it were, which is oh, just okay. a, list, right. a list of techniques, but we gotcha. don't have, like, belts and grades as such. I see, for I the, see. For the coaches of the system, we have, you know, there are, like, foundation, advanced, gotcha. elite, da -da -da, different levels. But essentially, for the students, it is just, you're a practitioner. Yeah. You are, you just, you practice the system, you train. There are no belts, because at the end of the day, whilst belt systems have their place, absolutely, my, our, the view for what we do is that in self-defence, it doesn't really matter what colour your belt is. It matters whether you can get home in one piece. Sure. It doesn't, you know, what colour holds your trousers up is irrelevant, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is there, is there a, a, 
an end game, if you like, you know, are you, do you qualify or is it a, 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 a continual process, it's if you like? Continual. So you can, yeah, always yeah. Continual. Although yeah. there is, you know, ultimately, there's a set number of techniques, as it were. Yeah. There is always another scenario. You, there's always little tweaks you can make. So, again, this is where we differ from a lot of traditional arts. A lot of traditional arts, you'll have like dozens and dozens of different techniques, and they represent fantastic broad skill sets. And yeah, if you can master all these various different skills, then that's fantastic, and nothing yeah. to be sniffed at, certainly. But we kind of go the other way that say, well, if you've got like hundreds of techniques, if somebody catches you out, how the heck do you choose from those hundred? As opposed to we go the other way and say, right, you've got essentially what, like one, two, maybe three initial responses, but you've trained those and honed those to the nth degree so that when you do it, you know it's going to work. Mm. Um, and yeah, although, yes, essentially you could, you could get to a point where you say, well, I've learned, I've learned everything that's on the, the sheet that says this is the syllabus. That doesn't it's awesome, but that doesn't mean you've mastered it. It doesn't mean you know. And the way we vary it is rather than saying, "Okay, we did that technique last week. Let's do a different one this week." Yeah. We'll say, "Okay, we did the basic technique this last week. Now we're going to change the dynamic. Now we're going to have the guy coming in from the other direction." For example, now how do you apply what you've learned last week to that scenario? And that's where the kind of the the additional elements come in. So it's not with learning new stuff necessarily all the time, but with kind of a, how do you adapt and apply what you've learned to the various scenarios. It's difficult to do on the radio because obviously uh, yeah, no one can see what we're doing. But, away, but, yeah. but we, we were talking while that, that song was on about um, holding your hand, if someone's sort of in your mm. face, so to speak, yeah, hold your hands up. Yeah. It, it's very sort of defensive Absolutely. and it looks yeah. passive. Exactly that, yeah. But you've got a very short distance between your, 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 the palm of your hand yep. on the bridge of his nose, let's, it, let's yeah, say. For example, yeah. Um, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. Uh, and most, most self-defense systems will teach you don't go kind of into boxing stance yeah. because that is a, you know, it's an aggressive uh, escalation, if you like. It is. Yeah. If somebody threatens you and you go straight into boxing stance, that's immediately raised the stakes to, yeah. oh, we're going to have a fight, are we? Yeah. But if you just give, you know, hold your hands out, whoa, 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 what's, what's going on? You know, yeah. calm down. You know. All right, calm down is probably... The, probably the words calm down can, in fact, inflame somebody. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> getting at, though. Yeah, that you try yeah, and, you know, sure. and like you say, it, it also creates a barrier between you and the other person, so... You, you often see in like CCTV and all that what they call the monkey dance with two people. You, you've probably seen it. People like arms out, <laughs> yeah. up, chest to chest. What are you looking at? That, this kind of thing. Whereas, yeah, this, as you say, this kind of, some people refer to it as the fence. I mean, it's just having yeah. your hands up, really. Yeah. But yeah, it helps you create distance so you're not kind of stuck in that, you know, face to face scenario. And like you say, you can then use that as a platform to strike or move off how, however you, you feel you need to proceed I mean have you have you ever had to apply any of your skills in, in real life to this day cr- touch wood I haven't had to test myself against somebody who's actually trying to have me <laughs> right no that's, that's, um, good. that's good we we're, well, I suppose we're lucky in certain we live in an area that yeah, by and large is, is fairly is not, yeah. uh, you know uh, I mean, <laughs> arguably I mean some I mean some people would argue that the fact that I've never been in a fight I've never had to test myself means well how do I know whether it really works well Okay, that's if you want that opinion, that's it. But, I, then, but this but system, I train, this system and technique has been developed yeah, uh, by people who have tested yeah. it to the nth degree, yeah. and I have then in turn been tested to the nth degree. Yeah. So, and the way I see it, well, the fact that I've managed to avoid getting in trouble my whole life means that, at the very least, my awareness skills must be pretty decent. That's yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I mean, well, that's that's the result. I mean, that's the, that's the the, the target really is, is to avoid exactly. is to avoid confrontation. Again, another it? lovely quote attributed to an ancient, um, famous figure in samurai, samurai law was that. Uh, guy who said, "Yeah, the ultimate aim of martial arts is to never have to use them." Yeah, exactly. And that's right. I very much adhere to that. Yeah, we do all this training, training for worst case scenario. But I sincerely hope I never have to prove it, as it were. Yeah, yeah. So no, that sounds great. So, so everyone's welcome, uh, all Absolutely. age groups. Yeah. Uh, well, I do say to sort of sixteen plus. Sixteen plus. Okay. Um, purely because. You know, younger people, you'd need to adapt it a little bit. It can be difficult to manage that in a mixed group. Yeah. However, you know, if somebody is a little under 16, but they're, you know, they've got the right attitude, then, if, yeah, they've got the right thought. But then, you know, I'm willing to consider exceptions on All an right. individual basis, you know. But otherwise, yeah, any age, really. Come along, give it a try. Okay. And and, and when and where is this all happening, then? Have you, have you had your first... Uh yeah, we've, session we've, had, we've had a few sessions. We were at uh, the Studio 2 in the St. Ives uh, Indoor uh, Sports Centre. Oh, uh, right, uh, which is um, uh, uh, oh, Burgess. Is it Burgess Hall? Yes, the the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Studio 2. Studio 2 there, okay. yeah. We train at 7, seven till 8 on a Thursday. Yep. And it's, yeah, come along. First two lessons are free because, I mean, most, most martial arts will give you a free lesson to try it out. Um, I, went for, I, I decided I want to give people two free sessions because at the end of the day, you have one session or something, you think, yeah, this is good. But a lot of people are sort of reluctant to sort of commit themselves to something after just trying it once. So I okay. say, you know, come and give it a second try. If you still like it, fantastic. You know, if you don't, hey, you know, it's not for everyone. 
hope you enjoyed it. You know, best of luck to you. Uh, so, so, so for the hour, what, what kind of the for, the format, if you like? I mean, there's a bit of warm up, yeah, a little bit of talking about you know techniques and so on, and, yeah. then, and then and then you start choosing one scenario per week. I suppose do, you're varying up a bit. It varies a lot. I mean, yeah. we do like a basic warm up. I try not to spend too much time because at the end of the day, it's a self defence class, not a fitness class. Yeah, yeah. But we do enough to sort of warm up and get a bit of fitness because at the end of the day, the fitter you are, the easier it is to run away sure. or to keep fighting. Yeah. Um, we usually do some some pad work of some description, so it's not like boxing style of their yeah, punching, but we all work in the various techniques under the pads because A, it's the best way to work on delivering power and B, it's, everybody loves hitting stuff after a long day at work. <laughs> Get the aggression so, out. Hey, yeah, absolutely. Everybody loves that absolutely. and then we sort of move on from there. We will look at, okay, we'll take a scenario like, for example, the other day it was somebody grabs your shirt front to threaten you or maybe you get grabbed from behind mm. or put in a headlock, whatever. We'll, we'll generally pick a an attack and then we'll work it from different angles, different intensities, different stages. So rather than going, okay, let's do dum 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 three different things, generally we'll go, okay, let's look at this one, let's look at all the variables, and let's really study this and how it can change now the dynamics can be worked out. And then, hey, yeah, if we've got time, we might look at something else as well. But it's not a case of rushing through to fit in dozens of things in a lesson. It's more a case of let's, re- let's really study this, let's really see where this is going mm. to get more of a chance to actually learn it properly. Yeah, yeah. What about... Um Alarms, things like that, you know, personal alarms, attack alarms, whatever they call them. I mean, you know, a lot of women carry them around, I think, don't they? There's these certainly nothing wrong with them, I don't yeah. think. Um, the, I think the danger with those sort of things is that they can instill a bit of a false sense of security. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that I've seen, I've even heard, I think it was in America, I saw something about an app you can get on your phone that if you think you're being followed, you turn around and hold it up and it's a, a direct line to some... I don't know if it's a pre-recording or a live of a, some policeman saying, hey, stop, walk away, and all right. this. And you think, well... That's, you know, it's not a bad idea, but is that really guaranteed to stop someone? Yeah. Somebody's really determined to come after you, blaring the alarm at them. It might work, and I would hope it does, but there's a danger that if you just think, well, I'll just carry this and that'll do the trick. Yeah. You've got to you've got to always be prepared for what if that doesn't work? Yeah. What if, you know, what's what's the what's the backup plan? <laughs> mm. And a lot of it, as you said before, is just being aware, not mm. getting too drunk as well. So, I mean, a lot of people, yeah. the more drunk and incapable you are, the more vulnerable you Absolutely. are to attack, I, 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 I assume. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if people, if people, that's how people like to spend their time. If they want to go out and have a know, good time, that's, that's fine. That's fair but, play. Yeah, yeah. You know, each to their own. But, yeah, inevitably, if you are you know, off your face, then you're going to have a harder <laughs> job coordinating and defending yourself than if you are, you know, teetotal. But, yeah. hey that's just one of those things that you have to sort of assess for yourself and yeah. say that you know if you if you're in a you should be you, I think that you should be relatively safe in your favorite pub or yeah. local bar or whatever yeah. it's just one of the stuff of life really yeah okay well that it sounds it sounds uh, sounds fascinating so it sounds uh, quite, quite useful for for people that aren't necessarily you know, they don't want to necessarily do the formality of the martial arts mm-hmm. and, and, and the, the, the sort of strict regime that it involves. It's a yeah. little bit more informal by the sounds it, of oh, it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we do have, like, when we when we start the lesson, we don't do sort of, like, lining up in, in yeah. rows. We just sort of circle up. And I do just a basic kind of bow, just to keep a little bit of the tradition, a little bit of the respect alive. Yeah. And after that, it's very, it is very informal. It's a serious subject, but we have fun with it. You yeah. know, I, I'm not a, a particularly serious person by nature when I'm teaching. And I like to think a bit of humour and stuff, you know, helps it come across a bit. It doesn't, because I've seen some classes where it's just deadpan, super intense, yeah. cra- and hey, some people like that. Yeah. Fair play, you know, to each their own. Yeah. But that's not how I operate. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I want people to get engaged with it and enjoy it. And yeah, they'll see the serious side of it. But hopefully if they have fun with it, they're more likely to take it on board. Okay. And you've got some contact details if anyone wants to find out a little bit yep. more. Yep. So we've got we've got the there's the website which is uh, self hyphen defence hyphen cams dot co uk. Um, there's a Facebook page again just self defence cams. Yep. Uh, they're the two main contacts. Again, all my my contact details are on both of those. Okay. And it's a case of uh, if you want to come along, and give it a try. Just get in touch beforehand because I like to just just be aware of just be the aware numbers of coming. and, and also someone. make sure it makes sure I can make sure everyone's insured properly because obviously when you're coming for a free trial because you haven't joined the club yet, you're not insured for a full sort. Full, uh, for full training, so I just have to gotcha. get, get, get that all sorted to make sure you're, you're fully insured. Not that there's any inherent danger, obviously. No, I don't, but, I don't you know, but you never know. Someone could break a leg. Well, I don't know, whatever, trip well, I over. Well, I sincerely hope not. <laughs> trial, so that's not kind of what we're going for, but hey, you know, it's all just to keep everything above board. Yeah. All right, so so just just to um, repeat, just in case you missed it, it's the, the website www.self-defence-cams.co.uk. And uh, Facebook is just self defence cams. If you search that on Facebook, yep, I should pop up there. Then, uh, then, then you should crop up. Should and uh, it's uh, seven to eight on Thursday. You said again. Correct. Yes. And the first two lessons are free, Absolutely, so you yeah. can dip your toe in and see what it's like before you yep. uh, commit. 
Exactly, yeah. And then if you do want to commit and you do want to carry on training, the sign-up fee is just £10 just to get yourself insured so that you're safe to carry on training. And then it's say, if you want a T-shirt, great. If not, hey, just carry on training. And, you know, yeah. if you want to be if you want to be branded at a later date, you're welcome to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds great. It sounds great, James. So uh, good luck with it. I hope it goes Thank well in the much. future. Is there anything else? you got any events coming up or anything? Or? Uh, nothing specific as of yet. No. We're still early days. So, you know, obviously just trying to build a bit of momentum and yeah. uh, get everything moved, get the word out there and, uh, yeah, get people through the door and... Uh, See where it goes from here. Well, good luck. Good luck. I hope it goes well. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for coming in, James. Thank you for having me. Thanks.